everyone this is Grandmaster Mark Paragua and welcome back to my YouTube channel for today we're going to discuss about the Dutch defense d4 f5 so in this position there are a lot of approach that, that white could, could do like white could play knight f3 followed by g3 bishop g2 b3 and c4 so that is the um i think like the most logical um setup or formation for white against the dutch defense but in this but in this video i'm going to show you a simple and very effective way how to deal with this dutch defense so after f5 bishop g5 bishop g5 so one of the idea of this bishop g5 it's not really preventing knight f6 but if black played knight f6 you will just simply take bishop takes f6 so e takes f6 of course if g takes f6 i think it will be very bad for black especially after g takes f6 maybe you had some e4 in this position black cannot take because of queen h5 checkmate so after this e takes f6 as you could see in this position double pawn you could maybe play something like e3 d5 and then bishop to d3 you want to keep pressure on this f5 pawn later on so example he played uh, c6 or maybe he could also play bishop e6 in this position so now let's say he played bishop e6 in this position you will play knight e2 with the idea of knight f4 queen d7 knight to d2 knight c6 a3 okay this is um, a very important move because after a3 you are stopping knight b4 the question is why not c3 because playing c3 you are also stopping knight b4 but the difference here is if you played a3 if you played a3 here it means that this pawn could go here on c4 so after knight c6 a3 knight e7 after knight e7 maybe with, with the idea of knight g6 whenever white whenever white will play knight f4 so after knight e7 castle g6 b3 with the idea of c4 bishop h6 and then c4 so in this position white is better why first of all this bishop this bishop on e6 it's a bad bishop and the pawn structure for black is very bad so after c4 um, the plan for white here may be like queen c2 put your rook on c1 rook a c1 and then rook d1 so it is a very unpleasant position for black whereas for white it is very easy easy for white to play in this position so let's just go back so after bishop d5 let's talk about this h6 which is i think a very logical move whenever white played bishop g5 against dutch defense so h6 you will just simply play bishop h4 so in this position you don't need to worry about this g5 because sometimes you are um you are you are getting worried about bishop h4 because there's g5 after g5 if you played bishop g3 maybe your bishop might get trapped but no because after g5 there is a move here that white there's a move here for white that it gives him a very um strong attack good initiative for white so after g4 uh, uh sorry after g5 white will play e4 in this position white could also play e3 which is a very solid a very solid um, move against this h6 g5 
because after e3 of course black cannot take g takes h4 because of this check this is their checkmate first part schrecklich so after e3 knight f6 okay so now let's talk about this e4 so after e4 knight f6 if black in this position if black played d6 trying to escape this king you have queen h5 check and then if king d7 you had bishop takes g5 and then here white is winning why because white is up a pawn and secondly this king is uncastled and of course black cannot take h takes g5 because the rook on h8 is hanging So now black needs to play knight f6 to develop the knight and then at the same time of course to prevent the queen h5 so after knight f6 white will play e5 if black capture this bishop we will just simply play e takes f6 with the idea again of queen h5 so if black take this one e takes f6 you could just play queen h5 check king e7 now white has many options here he could capture this pawn he could capture this pawn or he could just simply play bishop d3 because you could just delay capturing pawns here in this position because anyway this h4 pawn will be captured anyway this f5 will be captured also uh, and after bishop d3 this knight on g1 could always go here on a very strong g6 square which you could play knight e2 knight f4 and then now you could reach this g6 square okay so here after e4 knight f6 e5 black needs to play e6 e takes f6 queen takes f6 black cannot still play g takes h4 okay. queen h5 checkmate checkmate Queen takes f6, bishop to g3, f4, knight f3, knight c6, c3. Or you could also play bishop d3 in this position. But this c3 is fine. Why? The difference is if you played bishop d3, okay, bishop d3 and then followed by c3, it's good. But if you played c3, it means that you have another option square for this bishop you could maybe you could maybe put this bishop on c4 or b5 so you had an option for this bishop that's why that's why it's better to play c3 now b6 black wants to play bishop b7 bishop b5 bishop b7 takes bishop takes c6 so if bishop takes c6 you'll have this move knight to e5 all right and then black cannot take this bishop black cannot play f takes g3 because you had queen h5 check and then it's either king d8 or king e7 example black played king d8 you will capture with the f pawn we know that in this kind of um Possession uh, formation whenever they capture your bishop or a piece on g3 we usually capture with h1 but in some case you need to capture with f pawn especially in this position why because once you capture an f pawn it simply opened up the f file which you could use your rook to control this very strong f file so after f take g3 white is completely better because now you'll have idea of rook f1 you'll have knight f7 for threat so white is clearly better here okay let's just go back so g5 e4 knight f6 okay we we did this one already now what if black didn't play h6 so at the first part of the video I showed you 
what are going to play if black played knight f6 so now we're going to continue that so after knight f6 bishop takes f6 e takes f6 e3 now d5 bishop to d3 now c6 okay c6 h4 so um the idea of this h4 so that you are not really stopping g6 but the idea of this h4 is when black played g6 you'll have h5 and then example he played bishop g7 now you could do something like knight e2 knight e2 followed by knight f4 and then the weak square or like the weak piece in this position is this um the weak square is this g6 pawn knight e2 followed by knight f4 you want to put pressure on this g6 pawn so after h4 black played h5 because otherwise you are the one who will play h5 so black decided to play h5 just to stop the h5 the h5 for white so after h5 c4 knight a6 because this knight doesn't have any good square of course black doesn't want to play knight d7 because if black play knight d7 you are going to take this pawn or you could just simply take this pawn first c takes d5 c takes d5 and then of course followed by bishop takes f5 so black played knight to a6 maybe trying to get rid of this bishop or maybe later on he could play knight c7 to maybe protect this pawn on d5 so after knight a6 knight c3 knight c7 now this move queen f3 very important move because the reason why this is a good move because after queen f3 you are provoking or you are forcing black to play g6 because once black played g6 as i as i mentioned earlier after black played g6 this g6 square or this g6 pawn will be a weakness for black so after queen f3 g6 c takes d5 c takes d5 and then now knight e2 so as you can see this position this g6 pawn is weak and then also this pawn on d5 because after knight e2 the next move for white will be knight f4 so after knight e2 black needs to play bishop e6 so that if knight f4 this bishop could just go back here on f7 now this bishop is protecting this g6 pawn and d5 pawn so here white played rook c1 he delayed the knight f4 first okay rook c1 develop bishop e7 castle now castle knight f4 bishop to f7 so in this position white has a very strong idea or move so remember this is the position that you want to reach for white against this bishop g5 in the dutch defense whenever you had this position and then black castle you had this move knight takes h5 so if g takes h5 queen takes f5 of course this rook needs to move otherwise there's a checkmate on h7 rook e8 queen h7 king f8 so now we are going to reach the typical checkmate the a typical checkmate whenever you had a queen and a bishop which is queen to h6 because after king g8 you have bishop h7 check king h8 bishop to g6 king g8 checkmate in two queen h7 king f8 queen checkmate h7. amigo okay so now i think we okay so let's go back again let's go back again here what if because we already discussed the h6 and knight f6 so what if black played differently like g6 so i think this g6 is the mo most um, common reply or response whenever 
white played bishop g5 on his second move so after g6 the main move or the most common move here for white will be knight to c3 with the idea of e4 trying to break the center and also trying to break the pawn structure for black okay so but if you played knight c3 here although black could just simply do the normal way like bishop g7 like this one e4 and then it will transpose to the game but the thing is if you played knight c3 if you played knight c3 there is a move here for black which is very interesting if white played knight c3 on his third move black could play knight h6 black played knight h6 straight away so knight f3 knight f7 because if you play like e4 maybe black could play knight f7 so after knight h6 knight f3 knight f7 bishop h4 so although although in this position okay after bishop h4 bishop g7 so in this position white is white is pretty fine of course like white could play e3 develop his bishop maybe on e2 or d3 and then castle it is also good but but after g6 i am recommending this move not the main move this i'm recommending this move e4 okay e4 oops sorry e4 here d takes e4 uh, f takes e4 there's knight to c3 whenever black played bishop whenever black played bishop g7 of course it will transpose to the third move knight c3 but what if black defended this pawn if black played d5 you'll have f3 here takes knight takes f3 bishop g7 and then now you could play bishop d3 so here even though white is down a pawn but white has a very a good and strong compensation you could play something queen e2 queen side castle or you could directly castle on the king side and then play knight e5 to control this f5 all right so now let's just go on the transposition knight c3 bishop g7 e4 takes knight takes d4 black played d5 so now because if black played knight f6 I think you could take on f6, knight takes f6, but you could just simply play bishop d3, right? Bishop d3, queen e2, castle on the queen side. And then maybe you could do some pawn storm on the king side. h4, h5, like that. So after knight takes e4, black needs to play d5. So here in this position, after d5, the common move here for white will be knight to c5 like knight c5 followed by c3 and then knight d3 to get on the square or to control this outpost square this e5 square but now after d5 white decided or i recommend like you could play knight g3 which one I think it's better than knight to c5. So after knight g3, knight h6. Okay. So whenever you had this possession, always remember the form, like the setup for white, like the development for white. You could play knight f3, bishop d3, and followed by h4 and h5. So here, after knight g3, black needs to play knight h6. Okay. Because black needs to play knight h6 followed by knight f7 to maybe get um counterplay because whenever this knight gets on f7 he has black has a chance to play e5 okay but after knight h6 guess what guess what is the next move now here for white so after knight h5 
there is this move knight ah uh, sorry after knight h6 there is this move knight to h5 now attacking the bishop if black played knight f7 of course you will just simply take this one knight takes g7 king f8 after this um you had many options here so after king f8 you could just simply play bishop f4 bishop f4 or bishop h4 takes and then knight f3 so now white is clearly better because pair of bishops and a, a, a weak king right so after knight h5 black needs to play g takes h5 so after g takes h5 you are going to take this first the h6 knight because if you take queen takes h5 first there is knight to f7 and then black is winning because black is up a piece so after g takes f h5 you need to take bishop takes h6 first so if bishop takes h6 queen takes h5 and then now you will get back the piece and then aside from that white is winning because white is up a pawn so after bishop h6 black needs to play this move bishop to g4 an intermediate move bishop g4 so after bishop g4 queen d2 bishop takes h6 queen takes d6 so now queen d6 of course you don't want to trade queen d2 so here in this position white is uh, i think white is better of course in my opinion because there are like a lot of weaknesses here like this double pawn this e7 pawn this outpost all right so here h3 bishop so here you could uh yeah you could also play something like f3 but but uh, h3 is fine so bishop f5 you could play knight f3 here after knight f3 example black tried to play knight b4 to attack this pawn white cannot play c3 because of this fork knight c2 and if you played rook c1 black could take this pawn so now how you could prevent or like how you could protect the spawn so in this position there is this move bishop b5 check because after c6 you could just simply play bishop to a4 so as i said earlier whenever you get this uh, position you are always you are better so guys i think i think i discuss most of the most of the possible or like ideas or like most of the possible moves that black could play in this dutch opening so remember um if you if someone played dutch you could always play this bishop g5 it is very simple simple ideas and uh, very easy to understand or to learn especially if um especially if your opponent doesn't know this bishop g5 line against dutch if they don't know how to approach or to deal with this bishop g5 you could easily get the advantage i hope thank you i hope that you like uh i hope that you you learned something and also um uh yeah learn some ideas some setup like what are you going to do against dutch defense thank you so much everyone and please don't forget to subscribe on my channel to hit the like button and and to click the notification bell so whenever i upload or post a new video you will be updated thank you so much bye